Uh, we have a fascinating class tonight, Cooking with Veggies Part 2, and I'm going to have uh, Daniel, Pastor Daniel, come over here, and uh, he's got the purple dot veggies, and I've got the pink dot veggies. We almost matched. <laughs> uh, can you have our opening prayer? Sure. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our kind and loving Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings towards us, for this opportunity to be here uh, for this class. I pray, Lord, that you will bless us as we present, and even more, that you will bless all who are listening and watching in from whatever part of the world they may be listening from, and uh, that you will bless them in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, before I start, I see two cameras. I see one over here and one over there, but I can't look at both. Is there a way, I'm going to go while I'm looking at both these, is there a way they can be slightly yeah, closer yeah, together, can... just a little bit? We have two cameras. We have one for Facebook Live and one for YouTube. And, uh, and the so one on YouTube goes, goes on later. So. The one on YouTube is not live. It is will be a rerun yeah. later. Yeah, that's a lot better. I'm not going well right now. Yay! All right. So, uh, when I think of vegetables, uh, the first thing I think of is uh, they're a lot of work. <laughs> that's what most people think, right? They're a lot of work. They're one of those things that you dream about eating when you go to the grocery store. You bring them home, you put them in your fridge, and then two weeks later you realize they're rotten and you throw them away. So uh, last month we covered some basics on how to prevent that from happening. Like we learned how to steam vegetables in like 10 minutes or less, right? Five minutes for most veggies. Um, we learned how to roast vegetables in the oven. Uh, if you have like 40 minutes to let them roast, you don't have to do anything except turn them once. Uh, we even talked about how to um, uh, air fry vegetables, if you have an air fryer. I think we did air fried zucchini fries and we did air fried um, potatoes and air fried zucchini I think was the other one that we did. Oh, those were so good. I enjoyed eating every one of them. <laughs> we talked about corn on the cob. Um, so we kind of covered the individual veggies, right? So like how to do a pot of green beans or how to do corn on the cob or how to, you know, uh, do Brussels sprouts or, you know, your individual veggies. But I thought, you know, it would be so nice to talk about a few simple one dish meals. Now, most of the time when people think one dish meals, you think a pot of soup, right? So because everyone thinks that, I'm not gonna demonstrate how to make a pot of soup. Uh, if you want me to do a soup cooking class, send a comment and say, yes, do a soup cooking class sometime. And uh, maybe uh, when the weather turns colder, I'll do a soup one. But for right now, um, I wanted to do some uh, vegetable meals that you're probably familiar with. And you're probably gonna say, oh, I'm not gonna learn anything tonight because I already know how to make that. But uh, we're gonna talk about how to do them healthy, as in oil-free. Um, things that uh, we can make them taste really good, but low fat and uh, still fast and easy. So the first one that I want to do is fajitas. And I really should have Daniel helping me with this because guess who likes fajitas in this family? It's Daniel. <laughs> you have to take that off if you're gonna talk to the camera. Okay, I'll put it over. <laughs> Yeah, put it in your bucket, it's fine. Right. Uh, Daniel loves fajitas. I do. Uh, I hate them. Well, I love, I love everything in there. I love the onions, I love the peppers. But you just put all my good stuff together and... So, I know that sounds really bad. I don't usually demonstrate something that I do not like, but I cannot stand cooked onions or cooked peppers. Uh, so, and that happens to be what fajitas are made out of. <laughs> my dad always told me that, that if he had been born 10 miles further south from where he was born, that he would have been born in Mexico. And that's why he always loved Mexican food. And I inherited a love for Mexican food. He was born uh, near San Diego, California. And uh, so anyway, I think I inherited my love for Mexican food, anything Mexican, from him. And then he married me. <laughs> He'd been born 10 miles north. He'd been a Canadian. No, 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 no. I was born in Tennessee. Oh, that's right. You were born in Tennessee. <laughs> if you lived a few miles north, you would have been Canadian. I did live my teen years near the Canadian border. But I didn't move until I was a teenager. <laughs> no, I'm a Tennessee girl. And I know, a Northwest. I know. 
But the truth be told, I can't stand anything spicy. And uh, it just so happens that onions are spicy. Not when you and, cook them. Yes, they are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For me, they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I mean, even for me, paprika is spicy. So you've probably noticed if you've attended a lot of our cooking classes or, or seen a lot of my recipes on my website, I don't use a lot of spice. Um, and, you know, part of it is because I don't like spicy food. Um, so I like to cook things that are lots of flavor but less spice. And Daniel doesn't like a lot of spice. No. He just likes Enough. some. Um, Yes, I have the secret ingredient just for you. Secret ingredient. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to show you how I like to make healthy fajitas. Um, it used to be when we first got married, the only time poor Daniel ever got fajitas is if you went to a Mexican restaurant. And, and uh, Christina couldn't be outdone by a restaurant. <laughs> well, Not when, cooking for her. <laughs> when the fajitas came out in that sizzling cast iron skillet, that had this solid layer of oil across the bottom. I felt like a grease. I, I thought I could do better than that. So there's nothing wrong with eating fajitas at a Mexican restaurant once in a while. Daniel still does it if I don't make them often enough. But what a yeah, wonderful thing. <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> thing if you can make them fat free and healthy. And hey, I can make them a little less spicy. I still don't eat them. Okay, so I'm going to officially demonstrate for the first time in my life a recipe that I refuse to eat. <laughs> Sorry, maybe Daniel help me. <laughs> so, uh, the nice she thing... She's also going to teach me how to cook them, because I don't know if I've ever cooked them all start to finish. The, the nice thing about fajitas is that you really can use whatever veggies you like. Um, obviously, the one that you cannot do without is onions and peppers. It's not fajitas, it's not onions and peppers. So we have an onion here, and uh, thankfully the girls were kind enough to peel it for us, so I'm not going to cry quite as bad. But I'm going to let Daniel cut it. Um, it's my right there. Uh, we just like to take the core out of it, and we're going to cut the top off of it, and uh, then we're going to take a knife, cut it in half, and then lengthwise lay it down, and we just need thin strips. And Daniel is an extra of that, so he's going to chop all the onions for me so I don't cry so bad. So, uh, I. You get to see me cry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see Daniel cry. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, the other thing that is not optional with fajitas is uh, peppers, right? Now, you can use, uh, you can use green bell peppers, uh, or you can use red bell peppers. And I like to use a combination or whatever I have on hand. Uh, the first time I made fajitas for Daniel, I only had green, so that's what I used. But last time I made fajitas, I only had red, so that's what I used. Um, they looked hotter, but they didn't taste hotter. <laughs> it doesn't, uh, the red ones are sweeter. That's the biggest thing. So uh, if you don't like that flavor of the sweet bell pepper in your fajitas, just use the green ones. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but while Daniel is uh, chopping the onion here, I'm going to work on this pepper. What I like to do is just slice the top off of it like I just did. So you can see the seeds and the core. The core just pops right out with your fingers. Well, okay, I need to set this down so I can use two hands. So there's the core, the little stem I should say. The stem pops right out. So I can use this piece in chopping and then I can just take my hands and uh, pull the... They are warm. You're crying? I got my husband to cry on camera. No. <laughs> just my eyes are watering. <laughs> They're just taking the seeds out of it. <laughs> All right. You want to go help Macy with the camera for a minute? Um, yeah. See if you can uh, come in a little closer on this pepper. Oh, you got to go wash your hands. That's all right. I'm going to do another pepper. He said go wash his hands. The good news is Daniel's the one eating this when it's all said and done. These uh, peppers came from the local farmer's market. 
which is where I like to get all my produce from this time of year if I can. And this is the perfect time of year to make fajitas because there is lots of peppers this time of year. Do we have more of those? Yeah. I don't need a lot of red because I've got lots of green here. That's fine. We're just making enough for Daniel to eat anyway. So you notice I don't have a recipe. Uh, you really don't have to use a recipe for fajitas. You can choose whatever veggies you like to use. Uh, if you like mushrooms, you can put mushrooms in it. If you don't like mushrooms, you can leave them out. If you like zucchini, Zucchini is amazing in fajitas. If you don't like zucchini, well, by all means, just leave it out. Um, really, whatever vegetables you want to use in there is perfectly fine. By the time we're all said and done, it looks like we're just going to have a couple little pieces of red. But that's all right. The green one is nice, so we still have enough. We're just going to make some more strips. I think we got a nice pile of peppers here. says she's coming for one of those shirts. Oh, good! Alright, so we got little uh, zucchini strips here. You can see nice little uh, thin strips. Now this pan is a ceramic pan. 
Uh, the nice thing about ceramic is it's completely non-stick without a coating. So with this pan, um, and you can also use a stainless steel pan too. A stainless steel pan will work, um, or you can use a copper pan if you have a copper pan. Um, those uh, will work so that you do not have to use oil, which is really nice. So we're just going to turn this on, and I'm going to heat up the pan with the onions. There's my onions that Daniel nicely chopped up for us. And we're going to let those warm up a little bit. And let's see, we need some garlic. If not, the heat is without some fresh garlic in there. So we're going to put about six or eight cloves in there of garlic. And I have a nice little garlic mincer here. these onions get warm, I'm going to add the rest of the veggies to them as well. Hey, man, it's fun. It sounds like yours. She said she ain't looking for your perp on. <laughs> Sorry, Beth Ann. <laughs> <laughs> you probably aren't the only one either. <laughs> Praveen is watching. Where is Praveen watching from? I don't know. Say hello. Give me a comment. Hey, I want to know, how many of you like fajitas? Am I the only one that doesn't like fajitas? I like fajitas. I, like fajitas. I already said that. <laughs> Everybody in this room likes fajitas. Please tell me someone on the internet watching does not like fajitas. I do not want to feel bad. They probably had to shout out your video if they don't like it. I only like fajitas a certain way. Oh, well, you'll have to try these and see if you like them. <laughs> we'll see if Lexi likes ours or if, if uh, I didn't make them right. Michelle Perkins says she loves fajitas. I'm being outnumbered here. Well, it's a good thing you all like them because I'm showing you how to make them. Uh, Kathy, Kathy Puerto is watching from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hi, Kathy. Okay, if you do not like fajitas, have no fear. This cooking glass is not a fajitas cooking glass. <laughs> <laughs> this will not be the only thing we make tonight because that would be absolutely awful if I didn't like anything I made the whole glass. Kathy and Janelle say both say they love fajitas. I'm still outnumbered. Still outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> You like fajitas, Mom? My mom likes fajitas, too. Uh, I think my dad liked them, too, didn't he? Now, I will say this. I love the smell of fajitas. Is that okay? Can I just enjoy the smell while I'm making them, even though I know I'll never eat them? <laughs> if you don't get any calories from smelling it. <laughs> oh, they smell so good. I love the smell of onions. If they weren't spicy, I would enjoy it even more. The sad thing about Facebook Live is, is uh, you guys can't smell it. You can't it. smell it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna throw my zucchini in here. The onions are wilted. How do you like your peppers? Crunchy or soft? Mm, about in the middle. What's the middle? <laughs> <laughs> not too crunchy, just done. Not, not too crunchy, not too soft. Okay, I'll throw them in. <laughs> if you like your peppers crunchy, you add them later. If you like them soft, you put them in first. That, that's kind of the rule of thumb with cooking. It's all got to go in a tortilla, so I don't want it so crunchy that it won't fold up in a tortilla. Okay, well we'll cook it all together. We're just going to mince this garlic right on top, now that uh, I've got all the veggies in there. Kathy says, smell vision is still in the future. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Don't you remember like several years ago, uh, Google did 
good this um, this uh, uh, Google search engine. I was supposed to search smells for uh, April Fool's joke one year. Oh, that was long time ago. Remember that? That was like know. okay. Maybe I'm dating myself. That was so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna turn this down now. It's getting hot. Probably a good thing computers don't like generate smells because someone would ha certainly hack into the computer and make it stink in the whole office. <laughs> That'd be horrible. <laughs> Alright, I'm turning this down to medium now, because it's getting nice and hot. Let me see if it smells okay over there. <laughs> My eyes are crying from the onions. <laughs> no cry. The reason I'll cry is if you dump it on the floor. <laughs> I will not dump this on the floor, at least not on purpose. We're not making you promises I can't. But who would purposely throw food away, especially when it's good food for such a nice husband? I like I love how you qualify that good food part. <laughs> I said good food for yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, for me. I love how you qualify <laughs> that. You forgot two garlic cloves though. No, I'll get them in. I just had to stir this before it burned. You want to mend some? Oh, yeah. So sweet of you. Thank you. I'm a little bit of a clock sometimes in the kitchen, but I can kind of do that kind of do. Me too. Don't go back. See, I'm not alone. <laughs> Beth Ann says, peppers contain fat-soluble vitamins that do not cook out during the cooking process, such as A, D, E, and K. Nice. That's very true. Use the knife, sir. That is my knife. Uh -huh. I was thinking you were going to cut it with that spoon. I don't know what I'm thinking. So, you have to, like, Show them how good this looks already. There's actually, yeah, we'll have to zoom this in here a little bit. There's actually a lot of nutrients that survives the cooking process, and some actually even improves. I forget. I vitamin forget A is ones. one. Vitamin A. You actually get more. Yeah, vitamin A is one. So. Here, I'm going to carry this over so Facebook Live can actually see. Yes, you got to see how good this looks. Look at this. Isn't this incredible? It smells so good, it looks so good, and tastes so awful. No, I shouldn't say that. It, it tastes, tastes so good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> this is what love is, okay? Love is when you make something you hate because you love the other person. <laughs> But I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the smell. It smells amazing. And look, there's no oil in that. The, and I didn't add any water. The only water is from the veggies themselves. So let's put some seasoning in this. Well, you've got the camera nice and close. Um, we're gonna put in, oh, if she takes the camera away. We're gonna put in uh, some cumin. That gives it the Mexican flavor. That was about a teaspoon of cumin there. And we're gonna put in uh, just a pinch of smoked paprika. Give it a little bit of a smoke flavor. And we're gonna put in like a couple teaspoons of paprika, just regular paprika. It's two different kinds of paprika. Yeah, smoked has a really strong smoke flavor. You don't want to put a ton of that in there. And we're going to put, now we've got fresh garlic in there, but we're going to add some garlic powder too. You still haven't got to my secret ingredient. No, that's the last ingredient that goes in. And we need some salt. Uh, you can put in plain salt, or if you want a little extra flavor, you can use my uh, country style seasoning salt. Um, that gives like a, almost like a chicken flavor. But if you don't have it, you can just use plain salt, that's fine. I've done it both ways, and Daniel liked it both ways. So you just do a, bit, a dash of this and a dab of that? Or? I told you how much I was putting in. <laughs> I measured it. All right, now we're getting some seasoning in here. So now Daniel's favorite ingredient, 
which is the main number one reason why I never touch this food. This is the answer to Kathy's question where you don't like the meat. It's because Daniel likes cayenne in it. So about a between a quarter, an eighth of a teaspoon to a quarter of a teaspoon in there, which I might have to actually use a, a measuring spoon because these holes are too small in the shaker. I might be able to get an eighth of a teaspoon out of here. We'll let him taste it and he can tell us if there's enough in there. But that's what makes it so I can't eat it. I cannot handle cayenne. And you're not too fond of all the onions. Well, yeah, onions and cooked peppers. I love raw peppers, but I don't like cooked peppers, and I definitely don't like lots of cooked onions, so that kind of settles it for me. Okay, well, that is almost done. Uh, Daniel, you want mushrooms in it? <laughs> Do you want mushrooms in it? Of course. Okay. Yeah, put some mushrooms. Daniel likes mushrooms, so we're going to put some mushrooms in there. Now, there's another thing that you can do to add to the fajitas, and it's totally optional. I've done it sometimes and sometimes not, but uh, you can um, take tofu and cut it into strips and air fry it, make like a chicken tofu uh, with some seasonings. Uh, I just use country style seasoning. I dust it with a little bit of a corn flour and uh, put some smoked paprika with it and some salt um, and uh, air fry that for about 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Or you can do it in a pan, just roast it in a pan uh, until the water is evaporated out of it. And you can throw that in it, mix it in. Uh, it makes it like a, a chicken fajita almost. But, um, that's totally optional. If you want a little extra protein, that's a great way to add protein to this meal. Um, otherwise, you can just eat it like this. So this is almost done cooking. Daniel says he doesn't like it crunchy, so we're just going to put the lid on for just a minute. And we're going to let that simmer for a couple minutes. So I'll just set my timer here. And that's all there is to it. Like, all you have to do is, like, get some whole wheat tortillas and uh, uh, maybe a few raw veggies for the side, and uh, you have a full meal. And it tastes amazing to Daniel. <laughs> and everybody else. <laughs> and everybody else. <laughs> when that comes out, we'll show you, and Daniel might even demonstrate eating one in front of you. Who knows? But... Uh, now I want to move on because fajitas is not the only thing that you can do with vegetables as a one pot meal. I want to show you uh, one of my favorites. When I'm in a hurry, I want to eat some vegetables uh, and I want just like a one dish meal that doesn't take very long to cook, kind of like fajitas. Um, I like Asian food. So uh, I am going to use this pot now and we are going to chop some veggies and make a stir fry. Um, so, let's see. So you went from Mexico to Asia. We went from Mexico to Asia, and we're going to cook them simultaneously. It's going to smell amazing in here. Um, let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel some carrots. And there's my scrap bowl. You do not have to peel your carrots. You can leave them with the peelings on. Uh, the only difference is that your carrots will turn a little slightly brown on the outside if you leave the peelings on. Um, but if you don't care about color, you can leave the peelings on. Alright. These are tiny, thin little carrots, so we're going to peel a couple more. And stir fry is kind of like uh, fajitas. You basically just have to measure the seasonings until it tastes good with flavoring your vegetables, but you don't really have to measure your vegetables. You can use whatever vegetables you like to use. If you don't like carrots, well, you don't have to put them in. You can leave them out. If you love broccoli, hey, you can do all broccoli if you want. Um, you know, 
some people who, like, I'm one of them. If I go to an Asian store or an Asian uh, restaurant, whether it be a Chinese restaurant or whatever, and I decide to get vegetables and rice, I'll be like, put extra broccoli in. But hey, if you do it at home, you can do however much you want. <laughs> I'm going to stir these before I burn them over here. And it looks like they are done. It is done and finished. So come see the, the final finished product of uh, our fajitas. Look at that. I'm going to start ringing my head before I ring. <laughs> Doesn't that look amazing to Doesn't you? Doesn't that make you hungry? Mm, makes me hungry. So mm. while you're looking at it, let's just grab a Daniel plate here. And I'll say, see you later. <laughs> We've got a, a whole wheat tortilla here, and we're just going to take some of this and scoop it in. Christina likes to pile on the veggies. Oh, are you saying I'm putting too many on? Oh, it's fine. You can pile it on. <laughs> I, just can't, I just can't close it up. You can pile it on. <laughs> well, anyway. Okay. How's that? Oh, yeah. So there's your fajitas, Daniel. And if it's not spicy enough, I can add more cayenne. <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. I'm going to eat it for you. <laughs> I'm going to set it over here, and you can grab it whenever he wants to grab it. Okay, so we're going to take this off. And maybe I will ask my mom, can you, uh, can you dump them into a bowl and bring it back out here like one of the glass bowls? And rinse out the pan. I need the pan again, too. Thank you. All right, so now we're back to Asia again. We left Mexico behind. Sorry, guys. So we're going to chop up a few carrots. I don't know what it is about carrots. I have a fascination for carrots and recipes. I think part of it is because they're really cheap. They don't cost very much. Um, and uh, they don't also... Don't confess to anyone that's your cheap on Facebook Live. I can. <laughs> they're good for you. I mean, vitamin A, like, who's going to complain, right? Because um, you're not cheap. But uh, also, they don't spoil very fast in your fridge. So they're one of those things that you can buy, you know, and keep in your fridge for two or three weeks, and they're not going to go bad, like a lot of other vegetables do, like broccoli and some of those other ones. So um, carrots are one of those things I always keep in my fridge, whether I need them or not. And they're always there, and I can just throw them in as filler in any recipe that I want extra veggies in. So that's my uh, philosophy on carrots. And when I chop vegetables for stir fry, I do not chop them small. I like nice big pieces. Um, so, I don't know if you can see a nice and thick, thick uh, piece of carrot there. Um, that's what I like to use. Oh, Daniel's getting a fork. We're in trouble now. He's going to take you back to Mexico on his plate. <laughs> Douse it with so many veggies, you won't know it's there. That's the best way to do onion. Onion adds flavor to your recipe, even if you hate the onion. Like, if you really don't like onion, sometimes I'll just cook the onions in the veggies, and then um, after the veggies are done, pick the onions out and throw them away and eat the veggies. 
uh, just because <laughs> it does change the flavor of the veggies. That makes the veggies taste really good. We're chopping this nice and thin. sliced onion and now I'm crying. Yay! Not. Okay, so we're going to turn this pot on again. Uh, you notice I'm using, this is called a wok. Uh, the way it's shaped, it's got a smaller bottom, wider at the top. Uh, this is actually a wok and it's a, um, it's a thinner ceramic coating than this one. It doesn't, it's not nonstick quite as good as that one is, but uh, it works. Now it's airing because I took it off. Here we go. The heat isn't perfect. Oh, good. I lots of flavor. So I put enough uh, cayenne in there for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It's all that matters. I don't have to try. <laughs> if he likes it, I'm happy. Okay, I need a different spoon that doesn't taste like fajitas. We're going to put up this uh, onion and carrots, and we're going to chop some other veggies to go with it. So how about a few bits of celery? That's totally optional. You don't have to put celery in, um, but it does add a natural salt. Sounds like thunder upstairs. dry, it doesn't produce as much water. You can probably hear that sizzling there. Now you notice, once again, I didn't put any oil in. And when I just put the water in just now, I only put in like a teaspoon or two because you don't want to drown your veggies in water. You want them to cook without much water. That's what gives them lots of flavor. We're not making soup. There we go, now we got some cabbage in there. So let's add some flavor to this while these veggies are cooking. Seeing there's no flavor in the cabbage and carrots. We're going to put some flavor in them, yes. So uh, this is a gluten-free tamari. It's very strong, so it does not take very much in there. So we're just going to put a little bit of that on. We may add a little more later. And this is coconut aminos. It's actually, it's like a soy sauce, but it comes from the sap of a coconut palm tree. If you don't have it, it's fine. You can use um, soy sauce instead. It's a low sodium. And it has a very pleasant flavor. And that just added some water, so that will keep my pot from sticking, which is nice. Add some flavor to those veggies while they cook. Oh wow, it 
it smells good already. So I'm going to put this lid on, let that cabbage and carrots cook a little bit. And while that is doing it, I still have some more veggies to chop, but I want to talk about my noodles. Uh, there are several types of noodles I like to use when I'm making stir fry. One kind I use when I'm in a hurry, and the other kind I use when I'm not in a hurry. Um, Macy, would you care to go in the back and get the sweet potato noodles, the thick ones that we use for stir fry? So these are the ones I use when I'm in a hurry, and that's what I want to demonstrate today because we're in a hurry. I don't know why, but we are. So uh, these are mung bean threads. You can see they're very, very, very tiny. Um, they cook up very quickly. And there's two ways you can cook them. One, you can put them in a bowl, uh, pot of boiling water and boil them for like two minutes and uh, drain them in cold water and throw them in whatever you veggies you want. Or if you're in a bigger hurry or you want to do a one pot meal like we're doing today, you could just um, soak them in cold water, which is what we're going to do right now, and then throw them into your veggies when your veggies are almost done cooking. Daniel wants Lexi to try the fajitas. <laughs> he wants to see if you like them. I'll try them in a minute. In a few minutes. I'm okay right now. All right. I'm going to have to use this. I'll try it before I leave, though. Okay. I'm going to have to use a knife to cut this string off. There we go. So there's our noodles. Where did you get those again? I got these at the Asian market. Any Asian market will have them. Um, you can hold the bag up close so they can see it. I think you can see that. When you're looking for noodles like this, look for ones that don't have cornstarch in them. Some noodles, they add cornstarch to kind of thin it out. And uh, the cornstarch noodles are more uh, sticky. And I don't like sticky noodles. So these are just mung beans or green beans, sometimes it's called, and water. That's the only ingredients. And we're just going to put some water on this. And we're going to let it soak in cold water. Which ones are we going to do? Um, Lexi can show you. Lexi, can you show her where the stir fry noodles are? The sweet potato ones? So we're just going to let this soak while we chop the rest of our veggies. And, uh, no, put that in a bowl of water. Yeah, can you see the bowl of water? Yeah, I can see it now. All right, hopefully both of them can see it. Yeah. I'm just going to let that set aside to sit, because it's going to take a little while to absorb that water. And meanwhile, while it's doing that, I'm going to chop my veggies that don't take as long to cook. The carrots and cabbage, they take longer to cook, so I always get them started first. And, uh, yes, that's them, wonderful. So these are my other favorite uh, stir fry noodles, and they're they're voted the number one favorite here at the restaurant. And that these are sweet potato noodles. They're thick. It's a thick Korean noodle. Um, it's used in chop che uh, and other Korean dishes. Um, but these you have to boil separately, and they take like eight minutes to boil, about eight to nine minutes uh, to boil. And so I always boil them in salt water, kind of like you would spaghetti. Then drain them, rinse them, and then set them aside. Um, and they do tend to get sticky, so sometimes you have to add just a tiny bit of sesame oil or some kind of oil to keep them from sticking together or some kind of liquid sauce to keep them from sticking together once they're cooked. Um, Daniel, I'll let you hold this one up. This is the number one favorite stir fry noodle here at the restaurant. So most of the time when we serve stir fry, we do the fast, the, the thick noodles, the Korean ones. All right, so I'm gonna chop up this zucchini here. I love zucchini. Zucchini is my favorite part of stir fry. Um, zucchini and broccoli, those are my two favorites. So I'm going to cut extra zucchini in here. And once again, I like to cut them nice and thick. So I cut them really big. <laughs> um, 
I like lots of texture in my stir fry. I don't like minced veggies. zucchini from his fajitas. longer to cook so that will help help it not turn to mush the nice thing about having the soy sauce already in here that will actually help your zucchini not turn to mush um, when you have a little bit of salt on the zucchini while it's cooking, uh, it helps keep that crunchy texture even after it is fully cooked. Beth Ann says, why should we not get noodles with cornstarch? Uh, cornstarch makes them sticky. So if you uh, use noodles with cornstarch, uh, you will have to add more oil to keep them from sticking together. And Crystal Ledbetter says, your stir fry is amazing with other kind of noodle. <laughs> yeah, I guess Crystal has had it both ways, too. I'm glad you like our stir fry, Crystal. Uh, let's see. Okay, I've got the zucchini in here. We need um, cauliflower and broccoli. You notice I'm saving the cauliflower and broccoli for last, and that's because they take the least time to cook. Um, we're just going to put in a few pieces. We're going to make them nice big pieces so they don't turn to mush. It kind of is, is a, it sounds funny to make a stir fry without frying it. But uh, that's exactly what we're doing. We're doing stir fry without the oil so it's not fried. smell good too, but Mercy, this smells so much better. <laughs> I might be slightly biased. <laughs> vegetables on hand. I mean, you can make stir fry with just with just broccoli or just cauliflower um, or maybe, you know, just a, a carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower, the three or whatever, whatever your favorite combination is and whatever vegetables you have in the fridge that need to be eaten, uh, just use them. You can put peppers in there. Uh, obviously, I don't like peppers, so I used all the peppers in the fajitas, but uh, you can put peppers in your stir fry. <laughs> you can do all kinds of stuff. Um, it does not have to be a, a 16 vegetable stir fry. Um, the, the sky is the limit and sometimes simple is the best. Uh, my philosophy is choose the vegetables you like the taste of and that you like to eat. 
because you know you're going to eat more of it. Um, if you like broccoli, put extra in. If you don't like onion, leave it out. <laughs> I've made plenty of stir fries with no onion because I just didn't feel like eating onion that day.
That is not a sea creature. <laughs> you better be careful. Um, I think I'm gonna need scissors though. Macy, can you get me some scissors? You see how long these noodles are? Yeah. I'm going to cut them a little bit smaller before I add them in. Just because they're so long that uh, that's not going to go on your plate very well, or my plate, or whoever's plate, whoever eats this. Thank you. So, I'm just going to cut these a little bit smaller. Sorry, that's my timer. That's not yours, it's my timer, I promise. I just can't let go of this pile of noodles. <laughs> Daniel's gonna turn it off with me, thank you. All right, so now we have noodles that are not three miles long. They're still plenty long. But uh, they'll be a lot easier to stir in here. So I'm just gonna take my noodles and you wanna come up closer here so you can see what I'm doing. If you see, sometimes you'll see like a big fat, fat noodle that will never cook, will not be edible. So I always throw that out. There's a couple of those in here. You only want the thin ones, not the big fat pieces. There's another big fat noodle there. And then I'm gonna take my seasoning. We're gonna put a little bit of seasoning with the noodles. like almost watch these cook. They cook so fast. See how fast those noodles are shrinking? So are all these recipes on your website already? Not all of them. I'm working on putting a few of them on as I can. The fajitas are not on there yet, I know that, because that's a brand new recipe. Um, and the stir fry has been typed, but it hasn't, I haven't finished editing it. There we go. So we're just gonna put the lid on this, take it off the burner, let it sit for a couple minutes and it's finished. It's done. And I'm gonna use the burner for the tofu. I'm just gonna switch this off here and turn my tofu one on now. Someone said hello from Prescott, Arizona. Hello to Arizona. Do you know the name? Susie, Susie Vance. Susie. Greetings, Susie. I'm glad you can join us. All right, so I'm going to heat up my um, skillet again. We're going to do this tofu up because this is the, the protein. Um, this is what makes it really, really good. And I have never, like I said, I've never demonstrated this ever before in my life. Yeah, you can take that away. So here's our tofu. And uh, we got nice big cubes. And we're gonna throw in some seasoning. And my grandma always laughs at me because she says I never measure, but I really do measure, I promise. I just measure by dumping. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sorghum molasses on here. And this is uh, 
I usually use a teaspoon or two. This is one block of tofu, so I'm used to doing four blocks of tofu. I have to do a lot less. We're going to put a little bit of this coconut aminos on it. And a little of this tamari on it. And then salt. You want about a half teaspoon because the rest of your salt is in the tamari and coconut aminos. And yes, I did measure, I promise. You want about a teaspoon of onion powder. And about a half teaspoon of garlic powder. And let's see, what else am I missing? Lemon juice. I do like a sweet and sour tofu with the sorghum molasses and the lemon juice. And I want about two teaspoons of lemon juice. And you can see it's really, really, really juicy. But the idea is you want the tofu to cook in the juice because as it boils, the water is going to boil out of the tofu, but the juice, uh, the seasoning juice, is going to marinate into it while it's cooking. And so uh, you end up with a tofu that has a lot more seasoning all the way through to the middle instead of just some seasoning on the outside and the middle kind of blah. I don't like stuff that tastes like blah, so I want flavor. So. Uh, the other option, you can also um, like press the water out of the tofu and then marinate the seasonings overnight. This kind of skips all that. This is like lazy man's way of marinating tofu because you don't have to press it, you don't have to worry about the water in it, um, and you just cook it long enough for those seasonings to cook all the way in. And you end up with the basic idea of marinated tofu. Does anyone else have any questions on what we've done so far? I haven't heard very many questions, just a few comments. Don't be afraid to ask a question. If I don't know the answer, I'll just say I don't know. <laughs> now you notice, once again, there's no oil in this. Um, if you do want to put a little bit of oil in it, um, the only oil I would put in if I was going to put some oil in for flavor would be a tiny bit of sesame oil um, because that will give the nice Asian flavor. Uh, but you totally don't have to. You can leave it out. You can do this oil free. tofu class. Um, tofu, you can make scrambled tofu out of it and that recipe is on my website. Um, you can also uh, like make a tofu mayonnaise out of it, blend it up in the blender. Um, you can make tofu mousse out of it. You can pretty much like make anything out of tofu and it'll take on whatever flavor you give it. Uh, when Daniel and I were camping last weekend, I did a scrambled tofu and I did a, a stir fry just like this one, only instead of all the fresh veggies, I used dehydrated veggies. Um, so home dehydrated zucchini, uh, home dehydrated tomatoes and onions and um, cabbage. And we put all the dehydrated veggies in a pot with water. We boiled it with the seasonings until the veggies had absorbed most of the water and uh, they were getting nice and tender. And then we added those same noodles that cooked so fast, we threw them into the pot and that absorbed the rest of the water. Um, put that on our plates and then uh, in a separate little pot, I made a small uh, scrambled tofu 
And we just mixed that in with the veggies and the noodles, and that was so good. It was so filling, too. Just amazing. Well, all the water is gone out of here now, so we're just going to brown it a little bit, and this will be done. We're already starting to brown. I tell you, I'm getting so hungry now. Daniel ate his fajitas, but I'm like, this is mine, okay? <laughs> I mean, my dinner and this dinner. <laughs> These are done now. It just looks so good. I'm getting really hungry, you guys. Really, really hungry. I wish you could smell the soap right now. <laughs> Doesn't that smell so good? Yeah, come look at it. All the water is pretty much gone. All the water is gone. It's starting to brown. You can see the brown sides on them now. Now that was a water packed tofu that you used. Yes, this not. is water packed tofu. And we didn't put any oil in this. You couldn't do the same thing with the, with the one that's packaged in the. The morning new tofu? Yeah. No. No, it's not firm enough. It's too soft. You need firm tofu. Firm or extra firm. This is actually extra firm tofu. Um, it holds up the nicest for these kind of nice chunks. I need a bowl to put these in when it comes out. Oh, you can just grab the one that onion's in, throw it in with the celery. Victoria says, that looks like a lot of food. Do you need a lot of help eating all of that, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to help them. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sure, if you want to come and pick up some, I might save you a few bites. Maybe. <laughs> You have to come in a hurry before it's all eaten up. Don't those just look amazing? Can you see that? Beautiful golden brown. Lots of flavor. And you can always brown them more. For the sake of time, I just did them light brown. You can do them dark brown if you want them even more chewy than that. But as they it's, cool, they get chewier. Smell. So, now, my favorite part. I made Daniel's plate, now I get to make my plate. Let's see, what should I use? I think I need that um, spaghetti server, Macy. I can probably do it with a spoon, but it's gonna be a little harder. Wow. Wowie. I am so excited. You guys have no idea how excited I am. Yes, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna get a scoop of noodles here. Put that on the bottom part of the plate. See, after cutting them, and look how long those noodles are still. <laughs> now we're gonna put some veggies on top. You can see all that broccoli I put on there. I need some more zucchini. Let's put some more zucchini on there. Victoria, I just ate dinner, but I'm still drooling over your food. <laughs> well, you can see there's plenty more in this pot. If anyone wants to come and get some for dinner. Whoop, no, my poor tofu. 
We're going to have to have a funeral for that piece of tofu. It fell on the floor. Don't drop another one. I will not drop another one. Look at that, you guys. I mean, you can't ask for better. So thank you for bearing with me, even though my class was a few minutes longer than an hour. Just 10. I really hope that you go home and make some stir fry or you can make fajitas too, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I hope you had fun. I had so much fun. I'm so glad you joined me. Daniel, would you have a closing prayer for us? And uh, while he's coming over here, I want you to remember that we do this class every month. On the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m., uh, you can join us for the Facebook Live. And hey, if you have some friends who didn't join us live, uh, you can share this uh, because it, it, I'm not deleting it. You can still go back and watch it later and keep an eye on our YouTube channel. It'll eventually show up on YouTube as well. So what is that, October 19th? I don't know. I have to look at the calendar. Anyway, the third Tuesday of October, we'll be live <laughs> at 6 o'clock, so mark that on your calendar. And it'll be something good, whatever it is. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for this opportunity that we can have to do this class. I pray that you'll bless each one who is listening and tell me meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Someone thank says, you. Somebody says, before we go, are you really going to eat all that? <laughs> yeah, I knew beautiful. someone was going to ask that. <laughs> what, this plate? Or the pot. This plate, yeah, I can eat all this in seconds. And Victoria <laughs> says, rip tofu. <laughs> all right, so yes, more tofu. Rest in peace. But yes, as far as all this, um, I can't eat all this in one city. But this plate here, absolutely, it's going to be gone in the next, like, 20 minutes. So, um, but uh, the rest of it, I'll eat some for lunch tomorrow, too. And Daniel will probably have some. So, yeah, it'll be gone soon. Doesn't take long at our house. <laughs> so until next month, bon appetit. Love you all. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye.